Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is September 4th, 2024. And today we're going to be talking about why Barcelona was unable to reach the 1-1 -on -one rule during this summer transfer market, including the new news that John Laporta had been negotiating with the Saudi investor in order to achieve this goal. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Welcome to the channel, my name is Mo, and before we begin with the news, just a quick reminder to make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment. All of this helps this channel continue to grow. Also, if you are looking for any Barcelona jerseys or merchandise, make sure you hit the goal kit, skip bag, or fanatics. And if you are looking to place any sports bets, make sure you hit the bet us. All links are down below in the description. Now let's begin this video by talking why Barcelona was unable to achieve the one-to-one -one rule and what exactly happened that prevented Barcelona from meeting their financial fair play obligations. Now, John Laporta gave a press conference yesterday where he faced uh, where he faced the press and answered question in regards what was going on with Barcelona as a club and as an institution. And of course, one big question was why Barcelona was unable to reach the one-to-one -one rule. And even though some reporters did ask a few questions about that, one big problem was that many of these questions were softballs. And as a result, we got more questions than we did answers. And this is what Laporta had to say about the Nike deal. Now, the Barcelona president said the sport equipment contract that we are going to sign will be the best contract in the world of football. It is in a very complex negotiation process. Currently, we are focused on Nike. We could have arrived to the one-to-one -to -one this summer, but it would have been hasty. We wanted to improve the contract and wait. So John Laporta said that there was an opportunity for Barcelona to reach the one-to-one -one rule, but they decided not to because they didn't want to be hasty. And that, of course, left more questions and answers than it did than it gave us answers. So I did do some digging and I came across a pretty interesting bit of information from the reporter Adrian Sanchez, who is based in Barcelona and who's always a really good and reliable source of news in regards to our club now in regards to the statements of Jan Laporta I think they didn't make much sense to me because if Barcelona had the opportunity of to reach the one to one why wouldn't they after all Barcelona needed to make signings including the signing of Nico Williams and when that fell through because of the financial fair play Barcelona tried to sign Chiesa which also fell through because of our financial fair play. And finally, Barcelona tried to reinforce the midfield when Marc Bernal got injured. And that also fell through because of our financial fair play. And finally, Barcelona had to do some maneuvering to, registers, uh, to register players like Inio Martinez and Dani Olmo using the injuries of Ronald Araujo and Andreas Christensen. So that, of course, did not make sense because if you had the opportunity to sign the players that you had, that you wanted to sign and to register the players that you wanted to register, why wouldn't you take that opportunity? And while today Adrian Sanchez gave us more insight on what exactly happened in the summer and why Barcelona was unable to reach the one-to-one -one rule. Now it all began with the Nike deal because as you know, Barcelona needed to close the Nike contract renewal in order to achieve the one-to-one -one rule where Nike were offering 90 to 95 million euros per season for 10 seasons plus a signing bonus of around 125 to 150 million euros and had Barcelona closed this deal they would have been able to achieve the one-to-one -one rule but these negotiations reached a stalemate because both parties were unwilling to reach an agreement due to several factors. Now in regards to FC Barcelona they wanted a more money they believed that 90 million euros per season was not enough that the Barcelona brand was worth more and some reports are saying that Barcelona wanted around 115 million euros per season plus it's reported that Barcelona wanted a shorter contract that 10-year contract they believed was too long because at the end of the day Barcelona's uh, value can increase their brand value can increase and if it's a 10-year contract they would have to wait that entire 10 years to renegotiate how much money they would get per season and as far as Nike we know that they became hesitant 
to move forward with the negotiations after a court ruling was ruled in their favor. And as you know, Barcelona sued Nike in an attempt to try to sever the contract between the two, alleging that Nike had breached the contract because Nike had delivered goods late on several occasions. They had also not manufactured enough items on several occasions, which caused Barcelona to lose money. But the court ruled in favor of Nike, saying that there was no breach of contract and as such, Barcelona could not sever the contract between both parties and that seemed to embolden Nike and as a result a stalemate was, re was reached where Barcelona wanted more money but Nike did not want to see it because they felt empowered by uh, the court ruling and as such the negotiations stopped dead in their tracks and as such Barcelona were faced with the big problem of how to achieve the one-to-one -one rule. Now, knowing that they weren't gonna be able to close the Nike negotiations on time, Barcelona reached out to the Middle East to try to find an investor, and this is where the new news comes from Adrian Ch Sanchez, where he has revealed that Jean Laporta was negotiating with a Saudi company called Nuyum. It's a construction company based in Riyadh. You might have heard of it, in the past in the news because they're currently undertaking the one of the biggest projects known to man they are building a futuristic city from scratch a whole city if i know this is not related to barcelona but if you want to check it out i think the city is also called new so definitely check it out it's a pretty interesting project but i don't want to digress but it's been revealed that john laporta was negotiating with new so they can become a club sponsor we don't know in what capacity whether their logo would appear on the barcelona jersey whether they would, they would be a sponsor we know we don't know exactly how but we do know that jalla porta traveled to saudi arabia met with executives from Nuyum, trying to negotiate a deal however Nuyum rejected what barcelona were offering but they did leave the door open for future investments which of course was not very useful for barcelona because barcelona needed money this summer in order to achieve the one-to-one -one rule. Now with the Nike deal not possible and with Nium um, rejecting Barcelona's offer, Barcelona then resorted to their partners, their current sponsors like Spotify, like Aramark, uh, MB Light, Whitebait, etc. Sponsors that already have a contract with Barcelona. And Barcelona reached out to them so they can be investors in Barca Vision because as you know, the German investment fund Libero bought a portion of Barca Vision. They didn't make the payments they were supposed to make. So Barcelona reached out to their current sponsors to see if they can sell that part of Barca Vision that belonged to Libero to them so they can generate enough money. And it seems that Barcelona were also unsuccessful in this regard because many of these sponsors wanted either more control of the club or they wanted terms that were a lot more favorable to them than they were to Barcelona. And as such, Jean Laporta said, absolutely not. Yes, we need the money. Yes, we need to reach the one-on-one -on -one rule, but I'm not gonna jeopardize the future of the club by handing it to these companies in order to achieve the one-on-one -on -one rule. And as such, Barcelona were also unable to close the Barca Vision deal. Now, as much as mis there's been mishandling in this whole situation, I do have to give props to Jean Laporta for refusing to agree to the terms of these companies. Because after all, you know, Jean Laporta, he's only here for two more years. He could have easily agreed to these terms, sold, you know, part of Barca Vision to them, agreed to terms that are way more favorable to those companies than Barcelona, got in the money, reached the one-to-one -one rule, would have been a hero, and then could have ran on re-election with that, like, look, I achieved the one-to-one, -one. I'm sure he would have gotten re-elected, but in the long term, the club would have been hurt because they would have, uh, would have been tied to these companies under contract terms that are not favorable to Barcelona. So I really do give props to Jean Laporta for refusing to do this, for refusing to fall for the temptation of reaching the one-to-one -one rule, and as such, Barcelona were unable to close any of these deals with the Nike negotiations reaching a stalemate and will hopefully eventually close with the Barca Vision deal not being able to close on time either because many of these companies wanted more favorable terms and finally with Nium saying no to Barcelona's offer. So that was the reason why Barcelona were unable to reach the 1-1 one -one rule. I'm very curious to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions so let me know down below and with that we end the video uh, by reminding you that don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and as always,
Vizca Barça.